Hey, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Paradigm Podcast. We hope you're having a great week, and we're finishing up another book. This week's book, and the book we've been reading for the past couple weeks, is titled Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. We hope you're reading along with us. If you are, drop down below what's your favorite chapter, uh, what's your favorite takeaway from this book. We'd love to hear it and chat with you. Um, So before we jump in, we want to urge you to subscribe to the channel. We're on podcast platforms now. Go on the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, what are the other ones? Radio, Public, we got all of them. We're on all them things. Yeah. All them things. Go and drop a rate. If you if you like what you hear, drop a five. If you don't, don't do anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, like, the, like the video, comment down below, follow us on all our social media platforms. All the information you need will be down in the description box below. So we always start with a disclaimer. So we here at Paradigm do not claim to have all the answers. We simply desire to be better each day. We make videos in the hope that other people that desire the same can use some of the tools we've discovered along our journey. So the information used from this discussion, like we said, is from Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. And this chapter is titled Environment, Time, Harmony, and Caution. So first question, what did you guys find most interesting or most surprising about this chapter? John, we'll start with you. (laughs) <laughs> uh, audio cut go ahead david cut. um <clears throat> man there's a lot to pull from this chapter uh i really like the part where the q a um is discussing wisdom okay like giving a definition for wisdom um i thought that was really interesting to me you know as we get older i think i'm starting to understand you know like the difference between just knowledge and, and wisdom okay so, yeah expound upon that um yeah I mean, this definite or the, uh, the Q&A uh, on page 233, where uh, the Q is what is wisdom and answer is wisdom is the ability to relate yourself to nature's laws so as to make them serve you and the ability to relate yourself to other people so as to gain their harmonious will and cooperation and helping you to make life yield whatever you demand of it. Um, yeah, I, I just really like that definition. Okay. Um, yeah. I like that part. I'll extend that question to, to everybody. What do you guys think the difference is between knowledge and wisdom? That's crazy. Um, I do like how Napoleon Hill defines it. Uh, wisdom is how I took it is built over time. Knowledge is acquired um, mm. through a study of okay. any field. Um, I think what I'm not too sure exactly how I how I can define wisdom myself, but how I see wisdom is life experience because um, we can acquire knowledge and study all we want, mm-hmm. but we still have to go apply the knowledge and find out what works and doesn't work um, because you're not going to succeed or fail at everything you do. Right. So that I think intangibly will build you the wisdom that you need moving forward mm-hmm. um, to move smarter, um, to stay away from mistakes, um, to help other people. Um, and he talks about that, and that's why we're placed on this earth is to mastermind with each other to figure out what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. I think that key word was applied, right? Um, right. I think the difference between wisdom and knowledge is a, is a word applied, right? So if right. you have knowledge but you don't apply it, how wise is that, Yeah. right? So I think True. wisdom is, is applied knowledge, right? So I, that goes back to kind of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People uh, by Stephen Covey. If you haven't go read that book, go pick it up. One of the best we've read yet. In that book, yep. he says, um, you know, what's the point of knowledge if you never apply it? So yeah. um, there's a – I wanted to ask you guys this question. Um, he says the majority of uh, – Napoleon Hill asks, is, um, what is the age at which most people acquire wisdom? Mm-hmm. And he says the majority of people um, who acquire wisdom do so after they have passed the age of 40. I thought it was a little weird uh, – not weird, but like the definite in 40. Like there wasn't no – questioning what time you find it he just said 40 yeah. and i was like damn that's kind of like hard like you know that's a hard stamp at 40 um right. i don't know if you guys had thoughts on that i thought that was kind of um interesting but my my initial thought was uh it's the experience that's why he says it's 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 40 it's not 27 30 or even 21 or even younger yeah. because you need the experience to have wisdom yeah. And I don't know if you guys thought that was interesting. I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, we yeah. Uh, I highlighted it. I, I was, it piqued my interest. Do you agree? It makes sense. You know, uh, you know, life's a spectrum. You know, some people, like, you hear the term, like, they're wise for their age or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but 
I mean, it makes sense because like your twenties is is a time of growing. You know, you think you know everything. Turns out you didn't. You know, um, right. your thirties, you still think like we're we're not even there yet, so we can't even say anything. You know, right, right. Um, right. I I feel like how I think about situations just five years ago is completely different. You know, um, I couldn't I couldn't imagine what fifteen more years would add to like that type of that type of thinking. So it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah. even the change from 18 to 21, 21 to 25, those like, yes, the growth you do in those periods is like you, the year before you're not even that same person. So yeah. it's, I, I could see that like 20 is okay, but I know some pretty wise people that are 30, you know, in their thirties, yeah. I should say. Um, I'm wondering why he said 40 and I can get the experience point, yeah. but do you yeah. guys maybe have any ideas? Um, I agree. I think it is the, the experience, the experience, right? Like you just gain more, more, uh, uh, yeah, I guess the experience, you know, gives you wisdom to make the, I guess, better choices and even share, you know, like, you know, like great ideas to people. Um, like for me, I think about my little brother a lot. Like when I was reading this, I was like, the older I get, the more wisdom I should acquire to kind of share with him. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I like the part, uh, this quote, we'll get into it. Um, I thought the most fire like quote from the book was people are not born with wisdom, but they are born with the capacity to think yeah. and they may through the lapse of time, think their way into wisdom. Like thinking is a, is just everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's I love that. One of the biggest <laughs> yeah, that's fire. Biggest overarching principle of this book is think for yourself. This right? is after that quote, uh, the, uh, the, 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 Annotation by Sharon Lecter. Mm -hmm. I, it says, uh, I find this one of the most profound statements in this entire book. By using our ability to think and analyzing our experiences in life, whether successes or failures, we can gain wisdom. Can it actually be that simple? Dude, you yes. can run off so many different talking points about like <laughs> gaining the ability to like think more critically or more deeper or in a capacity where like you didn't think a year ago the w w in which you guys are talking about like, 18 to 21, 21 to 25, like mm -hmm. five years ago, I was a totally different person. Oh, yeah. right. And that's just based on my capability of being able to think critically on things. Yeah. That's crazy. So yeah. I don't know. That's crazy. You guys mentioned age yeah. and different yeah. principles. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like Definitely. when you're 21, it's like live for today, you know, 18, live for right now. Let's have fun right now. And I feel like the older I get, the more I want to delay gratification for a better gratification down the road. So, yeah. And when you're yeah. 18, it's like, right now i want it right now you know what i mean pleasure centered seven habits again go pick that right. up yeah um so this brings us to a really good uh you know segue point segue. which is were there any exchanges that stood out to you from this week's reading mm. um, yeah, okay one thing i really liked uh napoleon hill prompts a question is newly acquired knowledge the same as time tested knowledge mm. and the devil replies no knowledge tested through the lapse of time always is superior um, to which has been newly acquired. And I thought about this, especially right now, I would say like a lot of principles and ideas are being challenged that up until yeah. now you can look back through the lapse of time and they've been pretty traditional by, I mean, I think all means, you know, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden new ideals are all of a sudden like superior. Some, some would agree, but some would be like, I don't know. These old ones, they seem pretty good to me wise is better and i think right here that like uh vindicated like my thoughts on a lot of this stuff that's going on right now like politically um and like ideologically so what, what do you guys think about that do you guys think that yeah what do you guys think about that um i, I would sort of agree with you um it, he talks about it um how you're referring to uh the times changing in the environment or the current uh, political or social economic state that we currently live in. I think that's changing due to the temporary because uh, he refers to temper uh, permanency as the life of every human. Uh, we think of permanence as forever, but it's really in the terms of someone's lifespan. Um, I, I think of a hundred years, right? That, that's usually how long a human could usually last. Okay. And I think after, at the end of it, at the end of a hundred years, you start to experience dramatic changes. I heard this um, in a video one time. It said a lot of people in, say, World War II era aren't currently living with us to teach us the specific 
histories that were happening during that social economic time. So if that generation of people are kind of going, we have a, new, a lot, a lot of newer generation of way of thinking, a mm -hmm. way of operating. And so, yeah, times have to adjust, but I think those traditions and values will start to find their way back to the normal or the way mm -hmm. that things should be because of the, Whoa, the way things should be. What does that mean? <laughs> not, uh, so, not the way things should be, but I think um, the difference in change versus uh, tradition. Like there will be a, a balance set in that, but I think so much time has passed where a uh, hundred years ago, World War II, World War I, a lot of those people aren't here to teach us valuable lessons yeah. or even aren't even in office anymore. So we may create the same mistakes again. So I do, I do agree with you, uh, John, um, somewhat. I think uh, I like how he talks about permanency and the lifespan of humans. Um, and I think there's a change on the end of that permanency every time there's a generation ending and a mm -hmm. new generation starting. Yeah, because they, they have knowledge that would have stand, stood the test of time at that point. Absolutely. You know, yeah. it's 100 years ago. Um, yeah, it's interesting to think about it that way, too, because some people are, you know, contrarian, and I think that's how it goes generationally. Like, yeah. you know, the generation before you doesn't know. They don't get it. You know what I mean? And um, they still have a lot of good things to pass down. And uh, it's interesting because you see, you know, there, even the change from World War II to, let's just say, the Vietnam War, how different culture was. Yeah. I'm wondering what of those principles and paramount ideas that they had did stick with some of the generation yeah. generations that passed. And I, that'd be really cool to research. If, if you know some, uh, or, you know, have a loved one that may have served at that point, drop that down. Cause I, w I would really like to, yeah. to hear those and, and discuss those ideas because I don't, I mean, my mom was born in 1980 something. So I, I don't know nothing about that. So, yeah. um, yeah, please drop that down below. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah. And I think where my mind goes is when I think about like what I heard in that video, it goes to fa the family unit. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, forget everything external outside of your family and the family organization of like growing children and being raised. And I think it's really like a strong point that people understand their family's history yeah. and like how they got to where they're at. And uh, obviously I don't know all of my family, family's history. I think it's just more of a pound, uh, principal foundation okay. yeah. to understand like why family is important and why you need to develop a critical way of thinking, why you should, love your brothers and sisters and mm -hmm. yeah, you guys are going to hash some things out, but there's a lot of principles and understanding why family unit is so strong. And I think a lot of history is kind of like being changed a little bit. Yeah. In the current state. Yeah, definitely. You have any mm -hmm. add on to that? Tried mm -hmm. by time knowledge versus uh, newly acquired. Well, I was just thinking about what Devin said right now. You said times are changing from the, for the family unit. In I think in all aspects, like how John just stated too, like even politically, like, a lot of things are being pushed off of its like quote unquote norm. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's due to like, um, obviously it's only, I'm not stating a research. Statistic. Well, no, I, well, one, I just want to be clear. That was just an example that I brought up. It, like you could even take this in a scientific route. That's based on like data. You could be like, okay. yeah. let's say Jay's is, he's got like a, what's it called? Your, um, you're yeah. writing a paper. It's like your theory. Right. Mm. And like, if you prove your theory, well, that's like new knowledge. Like it hasn't, it hasn't like, uh, I see. Stood it up. hasn't passed time yet, right? But right. like stuff that's been been passing time, they're like, okay, we can all agree. Like, you know, for example, like how gravity works. There's some sort of math equation, and like we we build planes and helicopter, all this shit. Factoring that in, they're like, okay, it's been tested, it works. But like, yeah. I just that's brought up between scientific law and theory. Yes. Right. Yeah, scientific law. You can repeat it, and it'll always give that same result. Um, but Damn. a scientific theory is it's something that has to continually be tested through time order for it to become. Yeah, exactly. Through time become to change from theory to law. And That's what I was bringing up, what I was bringing up is that like kind of what Jay was, Devin was talking about, like family stuff and ideals. And now these new ideals are coming up and everyone's like, this is actually the right way. It's like, I don't know. So those are that's two ways to think about like what new new knowledge is. Yeah. Yeah, and really I, that snowball is getting bigger, and the momentum is going so strong that it, I think it's going to be implemented. So on our end, we kind of have to monitor that from our stage yeah. and watch how that develops through time, right? We're the people that are actually going through the, the experiment right now. Absolutely. It's a theory, and, and we have to see if it stands that test of time or not. So that, that's our role in this. 
is kind of be an observer. And then when we have kids and they have kids back, yo, this is either, this is the truth or this is some bullshit. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it, we're kind of those people in this experiment right now. Yes. Yeah, sure. Right. So, yeah, that, that's, I think uh, John, John said it correctly. We're in a simulation. You're asking cool. about the family. That's what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Ask but, the AI if we're in a simulation. <laughs> Ask the AI. All right. <laughs> we're in the metaverse. Huh. I actually never left the metaverse since Whitney. <laughs> Still uh, all right. Um, I got one. So on page 269 of my book, uh, Napoleon Hill asks, what is the most important of one's environment? The part which determines more than all others whether an individual makes positive or negative use of his mind. And the devil answers, the most important part of one's environment is that created by his association with others. All people absorb and take over, either consciously or unconsciously, the thought habits of those with whom they associate closely. So why did this stand out to me? Um, I've said it for quite some time that we are the product of our five closest people. Yeah. With that being said, I used to surround myself with people who live for today. I absorbed and took that mindset and lived similarly. It wasn't until I took this paradigm to heart um, that I looked around and decided to surround myself with different people. When I did this, my life significantly changed. So yeah. environment, that, that chapter in my book, uh, it was just split into four chapters, really stood out to me because I've been saying it for a while. Was, and we've all heard our parents say it, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, you are a product of the people you associate with. And I don't think people understand how important that is. I can really change somebody's life. And it, and it did for me, you know, and that's kind of what I read. I wrote that down in some personal time. It was like the difference of who I used to surround myself with versus the mastermind that we've built here. Mm -hmm. um, completely different, right? That's yeah. 21 year old Jay. That's 19 year old Jay yeah. to 26, 27 year old Jay. It's it, the, the amount of change is complete flip of a coin. And yeah. so, you know, I wanted to ask you guys, did this stand out to you? If so, why? I, I was thinking about us like, um, the entire time, <laughs> you know what I mean? And who, who I used to hang out with and who I actually give my time now to, um, I think we built a positive in environment and, a, a we've influenced each other mm -hmm. because we wanted to start, uh, you know, reading books to get better for self-improvement mm -hmm. purposes. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think, I think we are in a sense, a mastermind, you know, okay. like anytime I need, uh, um, I would say a critique on the way I'm thinking or how I'm feeling. I, I can, I call, I call you Devin or John. Mm -hmm. Those are the, those are the one, first people I, or, you know, you guys are the first people I think of when I'm like, I need, I need, uh, I don't know. I need to dig digest this information and I need a critique on it. Yeah. yeah like yeah. a second mind. Yeah. Like council. Yes. Council. We are the council. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I recognized it um, a few years ago, like who I was surrounding myself by. I didn't, I never recognized it when I was younger. Um, I, my mom would always tell me like, don't hang out with people. Don't like, don't surround yourself with people that like you don't find to find any yeah. influence in. Um, I think the older we get, we recognize, especially um, one thing I can, uh, uh, if you can point to someone and see if they're drifting or non-drifting, I think it's the definite and purposeness. Uh, definiteness and purpose. Um, I, I think that's where I started to align myself with people that knew what they wanted, why they wanted it and how they're going to get there. Mm. Um, and they just started, they just go from there. Right. Um, I think that's who I want, who I am. And I'm going to start as, from the point I realize have been associating myself with. Um, if you are sort of lost or you don't know where you're going or you don't have answers to why you believe what you believe, um, start, you know what I mean? There's, there's always a starting point. There's never like, Oh, I don't know. Like, and I'll never know. I think that's what definiteness and purpose is, is finding why you're, what you want, why you're here. Um, and then you'll start to associate with people that start to act and move in the same manner. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's easy once you get going, but it's hard when you yeah. don't know where to start. <clears throat> that's, that's very true. That's very true. Do you, um, do you guys ever, I mean, uh, like when you're hanging out with let's say quote unquote negative people. Okay. Do you feel the, uh, the negativity sometimes? Um, define, I'm just, I want to define negativity for my, like how I would define negativity as someone that, um, I guess complains, let's just say complains all the time. Then yeah, I can definitely feel that. 
I can, if we're defining negativity in the sense of someone always complaining, never taking responsibility, doesn't take action on their, what they tell you, um, then yeah, like I, you can see it, you can feel it. Um, it's, it's, it's an aroma. It's, it's in the air. Yeah. You yeah. smell yeah. the pheromones. <laughs> I, I've been, I've been noticing that, um, within me recently, like when I go out somewhere, even people that I know, and then when I hear their thoughts, and they, <sighs> they have that like victim mentality or mm-hmm. something that's, um, I don't, I mean, not everything needs to be positive, but I, I'm going to say the victim mentality. I, mm-hmm. okay. I can, I can feel it like, uh, my mood or my thoughts, like they kind of divert to that direction just to hear it. Mm-hmm. And then my mood kind of takes a dip too, because I'm like yeah. taking that on, you know, mm-hmm. I, I think, I think sometimes we're, we're unaware of what power our thoughts actually do to us right and like what what we consume i like the part where it talks about how what you consume you know visually uh you know like the, the music you listen to all that stuff is like you're, you're kind of feeding yourself and you're taking that in and, and that stems yeah. to people around you too um yeah yeah and that's so why interesting. He, and that's why he asked the question he said what connection if any is there between env- environmental influences and hypnotic rhythm Hypno- hypnotic rhythm solidifies and makes permanent the thought habits of human beings the mm-hmm. thought habits are simulated by environmental influences. So the people that I think there's a uh, large percentage of a way of thinking when you get around people with a victim mentality where it get, becomes contagious and other people start becoming victims in the short term conversation and start complaining because this person started it. And it's not that you have control of other people and what they think, but it's the environment you're placing yourself in. Mm-hmm. Um, if you, you and know, just... I, I, I want to just put a point. When I think of an environment, I think of like, how are you utilizing the environment for the most positive for you? Like yeah, uh, what comes to my mind is I remember when I was 19, I moved to Jacksonville, Florida for like school for welding school. And I lived in some shitty apartment complex, but in that shitty apartment complex, there was a gym and I thought to myself, I'm going to fucking come back home after I finish all this shit and I'm going to be fucking buff, dude. And like, it's a fucking shitty gym, and I end up getting a membership later. But, like, you use what you got. Like, how many people use that shitty apartment gym? No one, dude. No one. It's a whole apartment complex. And, like, it, that is actually a part of their environment, you know? Right. And, like, they can choose to use it or not. And, like, you guys know me. Like, my biggest thing is, like, physical health. I, I think that's, like, the cornerstone to positive thinking, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, and, like... Like, always, like, there was a park right next to my apartment complex. I would run it. When I moved to Fresno, Woodward Park was, like, my fucking – I would go every day. I, I, yeah. I didn't know anybody or anything, and I would just go run at Woodward Park, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, so it's all about, like, how are you using your environment? Like, you could just be in the apartment complex and be like, oh, this is a fucking shitty place, or you can, like, utilize what's already there, you know? Your, your circumstance you, – you related yourself well to the, to the circumstance that you were in and the environment that you put yourself in. You made the best of it. I made the I, I made the best of what was in front of me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. You know, even if it was a, a shitty gym, you know, it's it was a start. Better. You know, I was fucking yeah. working out. Yeah. It, it was better where, than not working out. And that's how that's how habits get formed. You know, when we don't really uh, cater to the uh, the idea that you know, oh, woe is me, and there's it's not a great gym. You know, you just take the action and you do you do it what you to, got, to, and you form the habit. Actually, that is that was the start of me working out as, as a habit from from then on for the rest up till now. Nice. Nice. That's yeah. awesome, dude. Yeah. Other than like sports or whatever, but like that's when I really took it seriously as like, hey, you're going to do this thing, you know? I think I started too in, in my apartment um, uh, when I used to live by River Park. Yeah. I would go and then I was like, well, since I'm going here, I, let me just go to GB3. And then now I go to GB3 and it's like, okay, now I'm for real. This is the habit that I built for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And, and this brings up a good question, I think, of, you know, what are some qualities? of negative thought habits or, you know, the environment we have, what are some things we can recognize and identify, you know, for the listener, for the viewer, or even for ourselves, people in our lives that have negative thought habits, how can we recognize that? For me, I I would say indifference. Um, I always kind of put this before, before I had the words to it, low vibration, somebody that just doesn't care. Low vibes. Right? Um, I would always kind of say high vibration people, low vibration people, but really it, it... boil down to indifference do you care you know do you care about what you're doing do you care about where you're going <laughs> yeah you have something to say i know you do cut this dude dude i'd be fucking 
high vibration than that pussy dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right. Well, we're live, so everybody's certainly uh, nice M, M. Uh, Mark Clip. So you know where that's at. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so, and then react, reactive mindset, right? So there's people yeah. that are proactive, that go, they're go getters. They know what they want, or at least they're trying to figure it out. And they, they're attacking a goal um, versus a reactive person who allows circumstances to develop their life, right? Yeah. We all know people that are like, you know, I don't really know what I want to do. Right. You know, I went, I'm going to work. They think I'd be good at this, so I'm going to try it. It's like, well, what do you want? What do you find compelling? What do you find interesting? Go do it. So yeah. Yeah. if you can identify proactivity in people, those are people you maybe want to spend a little bit more time with. I'm not saying don't hang out with these people. You have to love them. You know, some of them are in our families. But right. You and I think really he he nails it in this chapter. Um, damn, he said you know, pulling hills like how about people that have this in their family and they're kind of you know that they have a duty to that. And oh, he says he's yeah. You know what's that? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, he says, what if people whose duty to relatives makes it impossible for them to avoid the influence of a negative environment? The devil <laughs> states, no human being owes another any. D- it owes another any degree of duty which robs him of his privilege of building his thought habits in a positive environment. Fire. I agree with this. And on the other hand, every human being is duty bound to himself to remove yeah. from his environment every influence which even remotely tends to develop negative thought habits. This yeah. made me think of uh, like self respect, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're a product of your five closest people, look at the five closest people nearest to you is that what you want to be yeah that's who you are you know what i mean that's who you are and you know what i mean sometimes that makes that means you have to get out of your comfort zone and go find the uncommon people right and you know that's can't hurt me uh from from david goggins go pick that one up as well you got to be among the uncommon people you know these people that are proactive and they desire better things for their lives are not going to be every single person you know if every single person was like that the world would be a, a much better place but it's not like that so going and finding those people, it's paramount to your development as a human being, as a man, as a woman. Um, nice. Who who you're gonna be in the future, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. uh, what I do want to state, because um, it a lot, I think a lot of this uh, um, self respect, uh, I guess, talk. I don't want to throw people under the bus that really are struggling and they're proactively right. working on yeah. it. Like they're giving it their all. And by no means, whoever's listening to this, we are not cold, like cold heartedly attacking everyone that feels like I'm not enough or like I'm, I'm trying my hardest, but things aren't working. It's, I think we're targeting an audience range that is based around like our age group. Um, and what we see every day, obviously right. we don't see, the population that may be struggling and proactively thinking, okay, this didn't work, but I'm struggling right now. I can't pay rent. I can't do this, but I'm thinking to get better every single day. Yes. Mm-hmm. I just want to make that clear that we're not trying to state that like you can figure it out. Like you just can't think negatively. I think we all have ups and downs that we're trying exactly. to figure out, but we always oh, think I, I, positively right. yeah. Yeah, um, about the situation. It, um, it makes me think of a, uh, you know, beyond order. What, what was that rule? If things bother you, write them down carefully. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That reminds me of that. I think this is a perfect time, like Devin said, to to address, you know, and take inventory. Like Jeff Logan says, take inventory of the friends, the people that you hang out with, um, your situation, your circumstance, your environment, um, you know, and how can you relate yourself to to a positive influence for yourself, right? So you're actually establishing. A hypnotic rhythm with yourself and your thoughts and your environment will it things outward will i think will start to reflect uh positive thoughts right yeah, yeah betterment absolutely. for yourself right not focusing yeah. on all of the negativity and and people that have this victim mindset i promise you if you hang out with people that do not have that you will feel better <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and i think why i mentioned the cold-blooded uh because he asked that question uh napoleon hill asked the the devil right after he states, um, isn't, isn't it whose responsibility if you have relatives that are, that think negatively, mm-hmm. Napoleon Hill asked the question. He said, says, isn't this a cold blooded philosophy? And the devil says only the strong survive. No one can be stronger without Ooh, removing like himself part. from all influences, which develop negative thought habits, negative thought thought habits result in the loss of the privilege of self-determination, no matter mm-hmm. what or who may cause those habits. So it's like, um, I think why I wanted to state that for all of us here is 
we're not trying to pull anybody down. We're trying to pull everybody up. And self-discipline, self-determination, self-respect is not easy. And you're going to have to cut some people off. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sort of a cold-blooded philosophy yep. to the people that are drifters. Because you're you're doing better than me. Oh, oh, you think you're, you think you're better <laughs> shot? Like, and it's like, no, I just know what I want, and you don't. Yeah. Like, so that reminds me of uh, every time you say cold blood, I think of uh, the Dave Chappelle skit where it's uh, Rick James, yeah, and he's like, cold "What the five blood. fingers say to the face? <laughs> Slap cold blooded." <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of that every single that time. Shit. How do you? Okay, I have a question for you guys. Go ahead. There's someone in your life right now, or even the audience, you know, that is maybe. Um, in a in a negative you know way of thinking they're not a, they're not a, adapting to the environment that they have mm -hmm. uh, how do you go about you know um, being around them right some of it's our family member we're we're in it you know there's mm -hmm. people that we love that we still um, you know operate with so how do you, how do you guys or what's a piece of advice that you would tell someone who's who's in that situation right now you know we kind of just covered it about maybe like a quick thought one it would just depend on how mature are they? Can you have discourse with them and be open? Or will they immediately deflect and attack? You so think that's the, that's the um, a sign of maturity is to uh, not do those things, kind of like listen, be open-minded, or, or what do you think? It just depends. Uh, you know, it, it like if you're able to have a conversation, well, then you, you have a lot of different avenues to go against. But if someone is already... Like you've you've like identified that they're in like a negative thinking pattern, and you're trying to bring it up with them. Like, well, ask yourself: Is this can this person have this conversation with you, or not? Because sometimes they can't. So then, then that's like a whole different question, you know? Because mm -hmm. then I would advise like, don't even bring that up, you know? Bring up something like a first step type of deal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, at first, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm glad you said that because I think my answer would have been. Um, I think you said this, John, and I, this kind of stuck with me like up until this point. Like, don't I'll, be sure to ask before someone's uh talking to you. Like, are you looking for advice? Or are you looking for me to listen? Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, that. that yeah, that's, I love that. That's, that's a good one. That's really stuck with me. And if I can find that out, like if you're looking for advice, then I'm going to tell you what I think is possibly causing it. You tell me if I'm correct or incorrect, mm -hmm. and then we can go from there. But if Yeah, we can I, go back and forth. We can have a conversation, right? Exactly. Yeah, right. Like, and, and I'm on your side. Exactly, and I think the maturity starts to step in is when the conversation starts to be developed. Like, um, I think it's maturity slash wisdom. Like, right. let me see what your thought process is like. Are you going to start defending and deflecting, which John stated, like, Am I, are you going to start saying that I'm attacking you or are we actually going to have a conversation to be productive and getting somewhere? Yeah. So I think that's how that's, I would start. Just yeah. figure out, do you want advice or do you want me to listen? Cause I'll listen. And that question gets to like the root. Are you looking for advice or, you know, I don't want to give you an uninvited opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And, and both are good. I've had people call me and I've asked that question and they're like, I just want you to listen because they need to vent what's going on with their life and they don't want to be prescribed anything. And right. that's good too. As a good friend, you can just listen. You know, yeah. Yeah, that's wisdom. You're yeah. aware that, like, I don't want your advice. I need. I want to talk to you because you're the person that, like, well, just, I want listen. you to listen to. I yeah. want you to listen to me on this. Yeah. So actively um, listen. You know, that's good. That's that's yeah. really solid advice. Yeah. I'm just yeah. trying to think of you know things that because there's probably people listening right now that like how, what's an easy way to at least start and you like like John said a baby step in that direction. Mm -hmm. You know. So. Yeah, um, for me, what I actually did was, you know, I can think of some people in my life that are like that. Uh, indifferent is a word I would describe. Negative thought habits, definitely. Yep. Um, <clears throat> reactive, another term that I would throw under that umbrella. For me, what I did, and I think this is kind of part of your mission statement, is just be a lighthouse, right? Oh, yeah. Like, be a pillar. If it's your family, be a pillar, right? Conduct yourself because in your circle of influence is only yourself, Right. So take care of yourself and show that you're doing things that are productive to your life, making you a better person. And then when the time comes and they want to ask for advice, they will. Another thing yes. I'd add to that is limit how much you hang out with that person. It might, it might be unfortunate or maybe you can't if they're in your household. You might be able to limit it in the sense that how much time do you spend with this person? If, or how much time am I at home? Uh, because... 
if you're around them a lot, it's just bound to happen that they're close to you and you're a product of your five closest people. So limit how much time you spend with them. Pay attention to how they're thinking and what they're talking to you about. And just be mindful of, you know, just like Devin said, and just like John has mentioned, do you want advice or do you want me to just listen? Or do you want to bring me down with you? So I would just say pay attention to their thought habits. Pay attention to how much time you spend with that person and pay attention to yourself. Develop mm -hmm. yourself as a human being. And then when that time comes and they want to develop, they'll come to you to ask, how do you do it? How can I do it? Right. Yeah. So th that's you, what I would say. And that's just just to tie this back in, because you made me think about it, because you said, you know, limit how much time you have with them. Or, you know, you mentioned that. But also, circle back to how this chapter talked about time. Think about how much time are you setting a good example for them or being a lighthouse of them. Yeah. Like, like, for example, you know, uh, let's say there's two people, like two roommates, right? And one person has a positive thought pattern and one person has a negative thought pattern. Mm -hmm. If the person with the positive thought pattern just continues to habitually, like, have these good things, the negative person, he, he, can, he can accept to, like, realize that and change himself or not, right? But the person, he's literally conti a continuous lighthouse of, like, right. hey, man, I wake up and I fucking go for a run and I read and, you know, I'm physically fit and I'm happier for it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Other person could fucking be fat drinking Mountain Dews, you know? It's all good. <laughs> yeah, drinking the dew. And it, it, I, I find it like yeah. hilarious. Like when, uh, like I don't know. I always uh, when I tell people like, like when I ask people why do you drink soda, or like if I ever ask anybody that, it's I always get different responses. Uh, that just sparked like since you said like you may be <laughs> overweight and drinking Mountain Dew is like I always ask people that like why do you drink soda? Why like Dude. what? satisfied because they fucking do i'm not gonna lie because sometimes they fucking taste good i fucking dude, bought a yeah. vanilla coke i bought a oh, vanilla coke the other day and i was like oh my god dude, <laughs> yeah. dude. Fucking amazing. Up, you dude. can't tell me mcdonald's sprite don't laugh <laughs> for real and coca cola it shit hit different Yo, after whitney that's all i wanted it was a fish fillet <laughs> and a goddamn coke bro. that's all i wanted <laughs> Yeah, it just yeah, I, don't, I don't know about the fish fillet, but but not every single day, bro. Like yeah, not but even, not but not but not every day. Fish fillets do go crazy. Bad. Don't get me started on our Lord. <laughs> don't get <laughs> me that. started on fish fillet. Hey, I want to I wanted to ask you guys shoot from the hip. Um, there's a question. He says, uh, "What are the most impelling um, impelling basic motives or desires which inspire thought action?" The devil says the ten most common motives, those which inspire most of one's thought action, are these. Um, I'm not sure if you have that in your book, Jay, mm -hmm. but I, and the first one made me laugh because I was like, it's literally what I always talk about. <laughs> That's it. I was going to say, shoot from the hip, your top three, go. My my number one is the desire for knowledge, the de and number two is desire for material wealth, and number three is the desire for sex expression and love. In that order? Yeah. One, two, three. Okay. If you guys what page is that, Dev? Uh, 225. Yeah, I liked when it, when he was listing it. I mean, it was literally. I was like, I told you guys, fucking thirty. It's exactly. all about fucking nuts. <laughs> We're referring to uh, the first one um, for the listeners is the desire for sex, expression, and love. Right. Yeah. What are your top three, David? Like, what, if you could choose three of them, which one? <laughs> that one for sure. That would um, be number one. Um, my desire for perpetuation of life after death. Mm. Um, and then I don't know the third one. Let me see. Dude, for me, desire for physical food. Like, yeah, I was the, gonna say food the, too. the high I get. Like, my whole <laughs> my whole day revolves around waking up, eating food. I work and then eat food. I come home, eat gym food. Like, it, it's all like it's a reward for just being alive. You know? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. The food, dude. Breakfast, um, just that that's like crucial to like oh, my yeah. day oh, i have bro, to yeah. i don't know, <laughs> I don't know if people don't eat breakfast yeah, that shit's that's crazy yeah dude it's crazy i'm like what are you talking about just crashing around too just like an absolute For dick real. go ahead yeah, yeah, nah. shoot from the hip, um, from the hip in no particular order um the desire for knowledge uh the desire for what is it sexual expression mm -hmm. yeah for sexual expression and love and then um you know based on my looks i would say physical food because i'm a little jimmy but yeah I would yeah for me, the physical self-expression, like yeah. that's a big one too. That's probably. I was, gonna, I was gonna choose that, but I don't like the way it was worded. Like, but material design. wealth, I would like to have enough money to have a family at some point. So, and that's a lot of the decision, a lot of the. Um, yeah. 
warrant for my decisions would be like, a, hey, I need to kind of like money, money so I can start doing this. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I would say those three. Yeah, warrant you to yeah. partake in life. <sighs> yeah, but food food is great. <laughs> food. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love right. cheese dude, think about this. Like, what, yeah. like when you're backpacking, a fucking Snickers bar will give, oh, get you to fucking man. north <laughs> south. You're <laughs> like, whoa, yeah. dude. Dude, uh, imagine a Diet Coke on Whitney. I would fucking... Uh, <laughs> I'd be ecstatic. Yeah, straight up. It is. That's yeah. fucking went crazy. For real. That's All right. Snickers, yeah. I'm going to pivot us into our over-encompassing <laughs> questions. Okay. So what were you guys' overall thoughts on this book? Oh, man. Uh, who wants to go first? I say you, because you, you have, a, pas- you have a, a real strong opinion. Yeah, you really um, like this book. Yeah, dude, I... Man, I love this book. The, the the way that the last chapter hit too, um, you know, after talking about adversity in chapter eleven, I think it's just such a solid book for you know people who are going through adversity, and they do, um, you know, for those listening too. If, if you're going through pain and suffering, and all all you're confused and maybe scared for where the world's going, I think this is a great book. It's not that not that big. Um, it's pretty simple, easy read. I would say. And it just provides so much um, uh, information on thinking for yourself differently, right? So you're already thinking for yourself. We're all bound by, like, thoughts and adversity in, in life, right? But I think this is a great book to um, just be more aware of, like, your thought process and what you are scared for and take inventory of it. And how do you relate yourself to, to the environment and the hypnotic rhythm that we're all bound by, right? Everybody's affected by, you know, gravity, um, this state that the universe is in right now like it's we're in this you know so i would say this is a great book for someone who is um maybe kind of like they want better you know yeah i agree all right how about you guys um i kind of want to um run like a because i don't really know how to to summarize my thought of this book besides but like Besides saying like the part I think summarizes, because I, I do that for most books. Like once we get to the end, I like to summarize based on what the book is talking about. Okay. So there's a part. Um, he says the perfection will come. Uh, I'll actually start from the top. He says through the law of evolution, the human brain is being perfected to communicate at all, mm-hmm. um, at will with the infinite intelligence. The perfection will come through organized development of the brain, through its adaption to nature's law. Time is the factor which will bring perfection. And I stated um, in my own notes, time is working for or against every human being. And I put for, if it's working for you, you're a non-drifter. If it's working against you, you're a drifter. And why I stated that, he goes on to say, time is the law of hypnotic rhythm. Thoughts do not change from negative to positive or vice versa, except through voluntary effort on the part of of the individual. The term permanency, of course, refers to the natural life of the individual. In the strict sense of the term, nothing is permanent. Time converts converts thought habits into what might be called permanency during the life of the individual. People are not born with wisdom, but they are born with the capacity to think, and they may, through the lapse of time, think their way into wisdom. Say all that to say this piece right here. He says, drifters are always at the mercy of the non-drifters, mm. and the time makes this relationship permanent. And I think that that whole section I kind of highlighted and jumped around throughout the book, but that part that I just combined, I think summarized this whole book for me is like time, your habitual pattern, your associations, your harmonic rhythm with people around you. All of these things are a factor of the infinite intelligence. How well you can communicate with yourself and to the world on those factors alone will get you the permanency that you need to become like a wise adult um, or the wisdom that you're searching for. Um, and I think that was a great summary for me. Yeah, that's a nice. great, that was great. How about you, John? Overall thoughts? You have any? Yep. The big key takeaways, one, you know, it gave a lot of new uh, words to things that we had already knew, but now we can call them things like the hypnotic rhythm is one of them. Um, but really my big takeaway and which I, which I love, I was like falling in love with the idea of it is that like, he made things real simple. There really yeah. is positive and negative and whatever side you're on, you're the opposition of the other side. 
and like i want to be on the side of good you know and <laughs> like i want my habits to reflect good and i want to be in opposition to the things that are bad and i can't be in opposition to all the things but there's a couple things that he lists that are like kind of like their battlegrounds and a couple of those things i think I want to like help fight for those things, you know. I want to yeah. defend those things, um, right. and I really like that that part. It, it made things a lot simpler for me. I was like, ah, I'm, that's it, you know. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm yeah. going to be the opposition of the bad, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, a, I feel like there's a lot more. I agree with John. I feel like there's a lot more evil in this world than there is good, and I think I want to be on that side too. I want to be on the side of good. Yeah, according and, to this book, it's ninety-eight to two. Yeah. And one thing we haven't had a book like this with a lot of self introspection you know mm -hmm. and it was good to uh kind of look at myself again and be like am i drifting am i doing these things you know you know yeah and i think it moved the needle for me a little bit you know yeah, uh, yeah. And yeah. to the good so hopefully i can keep it up yeah and i so, think that's why he uses the age 40 it's because yeah. we, we have a lot of life to live we have a lot of learning to to go through what, oh yeah what was your thoughts jay um, you know, I agree with you guys. I, I enjoyed the book. Um, I'll ask these questions to you guys after I answer it myself. But after reading this big book, who would I, you know, who do I believe it's written for? For me, I think it's people just getting into the genre of self-help. This is a great place to start. Um, yeah. You know, we were talking about this a little earlier. Like, if when we started a book club, if we started with this book, it would have been like hit after hit after hit because – Every chapter, you know, we've read all these books that kind of have a common thread, and we talk about it in a lot of episodes. But this book is, like, a great way to open the door. So if you're just getting into the genre of self-help, um, start with this book before maybe getting to Jordan B. Peterson. This um, book would have been a banger as our first yeah, book. Yeah, as the first book, Dude, it would have just yeah. been hit after hit because <laughs> every single chapter has great takeaways. Yeah. So if you're just getting into this, pick this book up this is a great one to start yeah, with yeah. I, want to, I want to shout out to um johnny uh he johnny hernandez he's a good friend of mine and he's the one who recommended this book and he said this book changed his life i i only honestly i think i can say the same thing um when i finished the chapter uh it made me think about what we've already like john said we've already been kind of doing these things but we can give them like you know definitions for things like you know yeah. habit drifting loss but hypnotic all, yeah um and yeah dude I, I don't know it made me think about like as i was reading the last chapter like how far we've came from since just reading the first book and starting our podcast mm -hmm. um and we did that on our own i think it's pretty it's pretty cool um but that's why we do what we do right to kind of share this information with others and uh, i even like i posted it on my on my instagram today i'm like no i'm not on my phone as much anymore but this is a book where i was like I, if you're going through, like, like I mentioned before, like adversity, like this is a solid book just for like good information. That's quick. And it gets you to think for yourself. And that's the whole point. Um, the, the question was, um, after reading this book, who do you believe it was written for? David said, people going through adversity and people who desire better for themselves. I said, people just getting into the genre of self-help. Do you guys have anything to add to that? Devin and John. Um, I think people that are looking to go to get through hard times. Okay. Um, like not like not saying that they, they they're they're incapable, but like what extra what extra ammunition could they add to their arsenal? Okay. To get to get through um, to add into that. Okay. I think this is just an addition. Like add this to your to your ammunition. Like I know you got a long list of a hundred plus books. <laughs> yeah. I know. Just add it to it. Absolutely. All right, John. I'll extend this one to you. Would you recommend this book to people? To who? And why or why not? Yeah, actually. This is a book I've actually been an evangelist for. Um, I've been trying to recommend it to my friends, my age, also young men, single young guys. And uh, just because I think it's not, it's not too much, dude. It's not too much. Yeah. I fucking really like it, you know? Um, and I hope more people, I, I think just like reading this and then like, you just can't help but think about your own life and, just a little bit, I think, moves the needle. Even if it moves the needle, like, a little bit towards the more better, then, dude, that's fucking a better life, a better world for everybody, you know? Right. So, yeah. yeah. How about you, David? Um, no, I don't, I don't have anything to add. I think you guys nailed it. Okay. Um, so I'll ask you then, um, what was your biggest takeaway from this book? 
Um, Wait, is this? Did we already ask this question? You answered it. I have your your answers. Uh, I'm sorry. My biggest takeaway is uh, the ability to think for yourself. Uh, there's a lot of benefits to that, and um, you know we're all kind of bound by like the universe and its laws. Uh, and how you relate yourself to those laws, you know, the hypnotic rhythm is important. And you can either, like John said, you can either do do some good for yourself, do some bad. Um, you get, you have that power and you have that privilege. Um, but it's a, it's a privilege, you know? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. How about you, Dev? What was your biggest takeaway? Uh, I think... Um... The thing that sticks with any time I think about winning the devil is kind of getting away from the victim mentality. Um, all, he never states victimhood. He never states, uh, he calls them non-drifters. Um, but obviously, if you haven't read this book, you don't know what a non-drifter is, but you probably know what a victim mentality is. Um, and it's just getting away from pointing at the world and blaming everybody else for your problems and why you're in your circumstance and how to get through it and, and how to develop the, the, the production and the means to to, de to, to, to associate yourself with like-minded people, the develop mentality that is going to put you in adverse times, but also recognize like you're in that adverse, that adversity because you wanted that, right? You wanted the excess on the end of that, but you expected not to go through adversity. So, so it's like, accept that, ad that adversity and you'll accept the success at the end of that. You know what I mean? If you can accept, accept all that in between it should be solid. And I think um, that's the biggest thing I took away. Hell yeah. Nice. Hmm. Let me think. What was my biggest takeaway? <clears throat> I like the idea of hypnotic rhythm. I, we're all yeah. subject to it, and you have the power to create your own, right? And, um, you know, in Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he talks about increasing or becoming better. And he says, you know, in order to increase and better your life, you have to what do you say? Think, uh, apply, and do on increasingly higher planes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it, it really is a hypnotic rhythm. It, it, you have to, it's a spiral, right? Right. And so what made me, it just made me think of that and kind of cemented that idea for me that hypnotic rhythm can be influenced and you don't just have to be subjected to it. So bringing in proactivity and building your own hypnotic rhythm to build your better life. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. That wraps everything up for us. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Paradigm Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. We hope you followed along with this whole book, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, rated a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10. Go pick it up. You need it in your life. All yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, so before you take off, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, drop a comment down below. What was your favorite chapter? What do you think? Share this video and follow us. On Spotify, we're on Apple Podcasts. Anywhere you get your podcast, we're on there. Listen, rate, five stars, please. If you yeah, and we got our YouTube too. Our YouTube has content outside of this. We do have two vlogs. You know what yep. I mean? Check those interviews, out. whatever you're into. Yeah. So uh, go ahead and check all that out. Let us know what you think. Um, follow us on all our social media platforms. All the information will be down in the description box below, and that is the best way to get in touch with us because we're monitoring that baby. All right. So other than that, remember. The work you put in now equals who you'll be tomorrow. Peace.